I'm so excited that it's Halloween, my personal favorite holiday. Now, it's not because of the candy, rude of you to assume that, by the way. It's because of the spooky vibes, plain and simple. And since this is my first time making content for the holiday spirit, what better way to celebrate that than with the absolute most scariest thing I could think of? No, it's not the new old logo. I told you to stop bringing that up. The absolute most foul most sinister, most nightmare-inducing show my eyes have the displeasure of ever seeing. The most meaty. It, it's Mr. Meaty. We're, we're talking about Mr. Meaty. I, I guess I decided to give you all a trick this year rather than a treat. I'm both equally as sorry as I am not sorry. One bit. Happy Halloween. So, let's get ready to discuss the tale of Mr. Meaty, and maybe why you shouldn't remember it. Mr. Meaty was a Canadian-American teen live-action puppet series that achieved the secret goal of any good animated series, to scar a generation of children for life. Seriously, y'all thought this was okay to put on my TV screen as a kid? You sick monsters. Originally airing as a series of shorts that played during commercial breaks on Nickelodeon from 2002 to 2005, Mr. Meaty was greenlit and extended out into a complete series in the fall of 2005, with it originally premiering on Nickelodeon on September 22nd, 2006. And while that date is considered the premiere of the series, the pilot episode for the show, which featured material from the pre-existing short series, aired on December 30th, 2005, many months before the show's official release. But if you saw my previous video about making fiends, I left a little easter egg hint onto what this video was by talking about Turbo Nick and showcasing clips of Mr. Meaty. This show, in fact, was very similar in the sense of making fiends, with the shorts that aired during commercial breaks being used on Turbo Nick to your creation heart's content. At some point in its two-season, three-year run, 2007 would see Mr. Meaty switch from Nickelodeon over to Nicktoons. Oh boy, do I even have to say it? By this point, you know know what the Nicktoons channel is known for. In this case, however, I feel less bad. May I remind you of this? Uh, yeah, now cue the fans of the show starting to raise their pitch for- so, Wait, 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 hold on. Let me finish the video before I'm sacrificed to the content gods. Mr. Meaty was centered around two lazy teenage boys working a part-time job at the made-up Mr. Meaty fast food restaurant inside the fictional Sconchboro shopping mall. Josh was the charming, popular, uncaring, and self-centered 16-year-old protagonist who worked as the Mr. Meaty's cashier, while Parker was the nerdy, awkward, dumb 15-year-old Mr. Meaty fry cook who was happy to follow his friend Josh around. The story of two dudes who sling meat for a living which is a lot safer than their old job, slinging old ladies. Hey, stay put. Mr. Meaty's on next. Josh and Parker are named after Drake Parker and Josh Nichols from the TV show Drake and Josh. That's apparently true. Along with Josh also just being named after one of the creator's nephews and Parker's appearance being based on one of his other nephews. Throughout the series, the two boys were often placed in bizarre, supernatural, grotesque, and often just downright disgusting situations, while also dealing with common teen problems like dating and peer pressure. Oh joy. Mr. Meaty was created by the Grogs or alternatively, Grogs Inc., a Canadian puppet company that existed from 1992 to 2009. The Grogs made a variety of TV shows and short films for Nickelodeon and Nick's off-branch channels over the years, including a series of shorts called Nanolan, a just as strange but this time child-friendly show that focused around three-year-old Mona's time at her grandmother's house. Don't even get me started on that. And the Nick Jr. short series Whoopi's Little Bird. Seriously, no wonder our generation is so messed up. The Grogs was founded by Jamie Shannon and Jason Hopley. The duo later brought on Jack Lenz to help with their various projects as an executive producer, with Mr. Meaty being one of those projects. While neither Shannon or Hopley have worked at a fast food restaurant prior to making Mr. Meaty, Hopley had worked at a movie theater's concession stand in the past and drew on that experience for inspiration for plots. He has also cited The Ren and Stimpy Show as an inspiration for the tone and comedic stylings of Mr. Meaty and, well, look what eventually happened to Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, I'm not digging into that one again. The Grogs made over 250 foam latex puppets for the show. Along with Josh and Parker, the show featured a puppet cast of rotating multiple
small characters along with a few regulars. These reoccurring characters included Doug, a beefy mall cop with a macho attitude that likes hanging out with the boys and often helps them. There's Edward R. Carney, Mr. Meaty's 109-year-old founder and CEO who at some point was cryogenically frozen and serves as the main villain in a few episodes. For note, even in episodes where Carney acts just as a side character instead of a major villain, he is still evil, mean, and greedy, and will not rest until every man, woman, and child eats a Mr. Meaty meal at least five times per day. And Mr. Wink, the cold-hearted manager of Mr. Meaty and Carney's lackey, who has an electric chip on the back of his neck that Carney uses to zap him whenever he disobeys Carney. There is also an unnamed goth girl who occasionally serves as Josh's love interest. Ashley Steinberg, a girl who somewhat dislikes Josh, but still goes out with him sometimes. Ashley too, who chews her hair when she's nervous. Listen, there's, there's a lot of side characters that make appearances all the time in this show. There's a lot, okay? Remember 250 foam puppets? The show was eventually cancelled due to a mix of low ratings and criticism from adults and vegetarians who protested against the show, presumably for different reasons. And they even make fun of it here with this moment. Don't eat the buffalo. <laughs> Every memorable Mr. Meaty episode was memorable for its own special brand of disturbing horror it forced upon its audience. But two episodes in particular are always cited as the main source of preteen nightmares, and in my case, adulthood nightmares. The episodes Roast Beef Barb and the notorious Tapeworm episode titled Mooch Master P. Roast Beef Barb focuses around Josh just after he has been broken up with for not being hot enough. To cope with his heartbreak, he decides to create the perfect girlfriend using the new Mr. Meaty Jiffy Meat Machine, which can make anything imagined out of meat. Josh and Parker go out and collect DNA samples from various girls Josh likes to combine into the perfect girl for Josh. The Sensors. I don't care how many times I use that sensor clip, it's just so funny to me. So if I recycle the joke, uh, too bad. These samples include Ashley Steinberg's fingernail, Ashley 2's hair, and Brittany's boogers. Josh adds these samples to the Jiffy Meat Machine and waits for his perfect girl. What the Jiffy Machine produces instead, though, is a blonde girl with a pink headband and a body made out of raw flesh. Because, once again, Josh used a Jiffy Meat Machine that can only make things of uh, well, meat. Stick around for more meats at the mall. Mr. Meaty, next on Nick Jones Network. Disheartened and embarrassed by roast beef Barb, Josh tries to hide her from the public eye, before eventually accepting her as his girlfriend. But when Josh goes to collect Barb from her freezer room the next morning, he finds her cheating on him with a hunk of beef saying that he was so much hotter than Josh. So Josh and Barb end up breaking up and the episode ends. Fantastic. The notorious tapeworm episode, Mooch Master P, is one that haunts us all. Not just for its imagery, but for the disgusting implications it carries. This episode begins with Josh bringing in a homemade sandwich. Parker, enthralled by the concept of homemade food, begs Josh to give him just one bite, which Josh finally relents to. Parker then ends up eating nearly the whole thing, infuriating Josh, causing him to call Parker a moocher, and telling him to go mooch somewhere else. Parker goes on to mooch somewhere else by getting food off of everyone in the mall, going so far as to mooch an uncooked hamburger patty Josh was planning on serving to the customers. After eating this uncooked patty, Parker's stomach begins to gurgle, an occurrence he originally Rights office, just gas. But after which, strange things begin to occur. Parker finds that food is disappearing before he gets a chance to actually eat it. When he shows the phenomenon to Josh, Josh decides to record Parker attempting to eat a meatball to discover what's going on. This recording, however, when played back in slow motion, shows that an enormous tapeworm is living in Parker's stomach thanks to the raw patty he ate. To get it out, the boys tie a sausage to a fishing line to bait the tapeworm, they yank the tapeworm out of Parker's stomach and trap it in the fry basket. Afterwards, Larry, an Australian zookeeper, approaches the boys and offers to buy the tapeworm for $20. The boys agree and look on horrified as Larry commences to swallow the wormhole, and then the boys use the $20 to buy all the mooched victims their food back, and Parker promises no longer to be a moocher. Well, at least there's a moral in there. Sweet, 20 bucks! To put it simply, this show haunts my dreams, and not in a good way. There is something so uncanny with the design of the puppets mixed with all the disturbingly 
extremely horrific imagery that as a kid show really made me uncomfortable. But for some reason, I can't take my eyes away from it when watching it. I don't label this as a good or a bad show. I label this as the most weird, surreal piece of kids programming from a major network that I've ever seen. Watching it back now and facing my fears, this is something I could expect from Comedy Central, Adult Swim, or one of those YouTube channels that make very creepy yet oddly fascinating pieces of work. Seeing it in this light, the show kind of works as something not everyone could get into, but I totally see why some may actually find this mesmerizing, especially if you're grassily enlightened or it may just cause you panic attacks. Anyway, I think this show is why I've stayed away from most puppet-based properties, whether good or bad. Well, just stay away from the Happy Time Murders in general. That's just some free advice. But yes, I am saying Mr. Meaty is the reason I can't watch the Muppets. Hey there, buddy. Don't be scared. We're only here for entertainment. Oh my gosh, is that Ray Romano? All right, buddy, you want to tussle? I will kill... <clears throat> anyway, this is an experience, not just another show. I don't hold any hate in my heart for it, nor an outpour of love. Just a form of respect for how it left an impact on me, and still to this day, can't look at meat the same way. If you like this show, if you don't like this show, let me know in the comments below, because I am genuinely curious as to why for either option, and also how it has affected you. I for one will personally not be revisiting this show any time soon after this. I certainly got my fill, and now I have indigestion. Thanks, Nickelodeon. It smells like smoked ham in here. And thus was the tale of Mr. Meaty. I thank you for sharing in this experience with me here today. Before you go, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more nostalgia trips. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, have a happy Halloween and stay safe out there, my friends.